Hey guys, Josh with Link Spider. I wanted to take the opportunity to show you how to take a standard GoPro with a tripod mount connected to our Link Spider to a chain link fence for recording baseball and softball games. Um, in the next video, we're going to go a little bit farther. We're going to talk about using the battery eliminator. We're going to use an external battery, but for right now, we're just going to go bare bones. Uh, we've got our GoPro. This is a Hero 3 white uh, tripod mount from GoPro, and then our Link Spider. That's all you'll need. Uh, standard battery will record about an hour and a half um, for some youth games. That'll get you through the whole thing. Again, uh, stay tuned for the next videos and we'll talk about how to get you a little bit more recording time. Alright, so for setup, what I've found the best is, and if you can get as high as you can, that's even better. But as far as being behind the plate, if you are predominantly a right-handed batting team or if the player that you're trying to record is right-handed, I tend to mount the GoPro directly behind that battery. Again, if your team is predominantly left-handed, or if the player that you're recording is left-handed, you want to do the opposite. And what this does is, it gets you a better angle of the ball coming across the plate for impact. You're going to get the whole field regardless, but if you put it directly behind the umpire, you're going to miss that ball going across the strike zone. You're going to miss that point, impact point from the bat. Now as for actually mounting the GoPro and the Link Spider, uh, I call this the put-away position. That's where all of the claws um, are closed down, they're all tightened. Um, the spider slider has the camera in the center of the window here. Um, the neoprene washers that we have custom made are hard enough to handle the environment that is softball and baseball. Uh, heat, rain, all that stuff. Um, but even though they're hard, they still have a bit of tack to them. And we did that on purpose so that once you lock these down, they're not going anywhere. But the reason why I tell you this is, when you un uh, tighten these claws for the first time, you're going to find in one direction, either this direction or side to side, that washer is going to be held on tight. And before you go and loosen all of these and mount it to the fence, it's much easier if you actually release it the very first time so that it moves in all directions. And you're going to want to do that on all four of these so that when you go to place it on the fence, you don't then have to loosen those guys and it move around on them. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to mount this to the fence. All right, so we've taken our link spider and we've loosened all of the claw connections and we've made sure that all of these claws can move around to make it easier for setup. And the first thing that we're going to do is to basically place the link spider on a position on the fence where the GoPro is centered close as you can to one of the windows. That's a good starting point. We'll make some adjustments after we get it mounted. But then what you want to do is you want to take usually the top right claw and you want to kind of get it close and just give it just a little tighten. And then you want to go the other direction. You want to go on the left hand side. All right, you want to get it as level as you can, but again, we're going to make some adjustments later. Then you want to tighten it down. And then I find that usually going the bottom right direction is the best. And get that one close and tighten it down. Now, on this last one, because of the way a chain link fence is designed where you've got a high piece and a low piece, usually you're going to find that this bottom left corner is difficult to get to. You can either take your finger and push on this corner and get you in there like that. But what I find is, because we've got three good solid connections, it's usually just as easy to come up here and push it on that other high part of the chain link fence and tighten that down. And because we're pulling away from these two points here, it's not going to go anywhere. You take the fence and shake it a little bit you'll see that you're you're firmly seated now the last thing that you want to do is you want to loosen the spider slider connection here and we're going to basically move this camera up and down so that the center of the gopro lens is directly in the center of one of these openings now you can help yourself out either either by using the lcd back screen or uh, use a Wi-Fi connection to a cell phone. Uh, I do find that the LCD back screen is a lot easier because you can see instantaneously where your, um, where your view is. Uh, but once you know you're centered in there and you've got the whole field in sight, uh, you don't have any of the chain link fence covering up any important part. Now in some cases you're going to see, uh, depending on you know, the depth of the backstop, depending on the size of the chain link fence, you may see a bit of this stuff on your view, but you don't want it in the center, obviously. You want to be able to get as good a view as you possibly can. So the last thing I do before I walk away is I just give each of these just a real good firm tighten. I shake in the fence, I know that it's not going anywhere, and that's all there is to it. Now, if you're going 
to a similar field that has the exact same setup, uh, it's in good condition, what I find is I'm going to leave these top two connections the same. I'm not going to loosen those. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to take it from the fence. And then when I go to that other field, or if I come back to this field, usually I'm able to put it in the exact same spot and very quickly get our camera remounted again. Again, we wanna shake our fence, make sure we're not going anywhere. We want to adjust the angle of the camera so that we're getting um, the best view of the field as possible. I mentioned earlier in the video, the higher that you mount this Link Spider, the better, because what that will allow you to do is to kind of point your GoPro down and that gets the skyline out of the view, which will meter the lighting much better on the field. All right, so we've got our Link Spider and GoPro set up ready to go at this point. We would start the recording. Uh, I generally do it at the beginning of an inning. I also stop it at the end of an inning. That does a couple things. One, uh, you're not recording stuff between the innings that you don't really want to see. Uh, it makes it easier to go through each of the files because you know what inning and what side of the inning you're working with. And lastly, it taxes the camera a lot less. Um, these larger high def files, the bigger they get, the hotter your camera is going to get. In the heat of the day, your camera is going to shut down. So but that's what I do. Um, as I mentioned, in future videos, we're going to talk about a couple of things. One of those things is the battery eliminator. It's made by a company called Switchtronics. Uh, it takes the place of the GoPro battery. Um, it allows external USB connection. And what we do is we use um, an EasyAct battery that we place in this pouch. It's a $9 pouch you can buy from Lowe's. Uh, you put this on here, uh, you mount that on the bottom side of the Link Spider, and it will record uh, up to a week in, in, from what I've found. We, we go to a tournament every weekend. Uh, we record five, six, seven, sometimes eight games in a weekend. We do four or five league games during the week. I charge that thing once a week and it's never let me down. Um, again, future videos are gonna show you how to mount that and some possible modifications that you might want to make uh, to your camera and your case that I'm certain will void your GoPro warranty. Um, but if you wanna use these items and the external uh, LCD backpack, uh, you'll have to do that. Um, so stay tuned for those videos. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Josh with Link Spider. If you want more information about Link Spider, go to www.linkspider.com. Thanks.